What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Destiny 2. In the last episode, we completed the only lost sector here on Mercury, as well as the very first of three adventures to do on this planet, the Up and Up. And in this episode, we're going to be heading on into the second adventure. Now, this one is called A Bug in the System, and I want to just clarify right off the bat that... I already recorded all of these adventures, and my computer crashed on me, and I lost all of the footage, and so I'm recording these again. Thankfully, you can redo adventures, so that is actually a thing that we can do. But, oh dear, it kind of sucks that I still have to record everything. Again. Alright, so we need to head back into the infinite forest. Again, we have to go through the forest pathways once again, which are completely randomly generated and still haven't gotten any better and never will get any better because, well, I've already gone over this before and I'm not going to go over it again. Um, I should mention, though, really quickly that I did actually go talk to Ikora as soon as we finished the campaign because I didn't really, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I got this. Um called Eon Soul. Throwing grenades grants the following to nearby Eon Call allies. Grenade energy, barricade energy, and dodge energy. Um, why it doesn't give rift energy to warlocks? I will never know. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, there's one for each subclass, or for each class, like an, e an Aeon, whatever. Like, to be an Aeon Call ally, you have to be have that exotic armor equipped uh, for your class. But why does it give the class ability uh, stuff to the Titans and the Hunters, but not the Warlocks, especially since I'm pretty sure the Warlock class ability only generates barely slower than the Barricade one. Like, it's just as valuable. Why is... Why? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to do that, so we're going to go mess with a bunch of Hive and Vex in the process. So let's keep going, and we're just going to go right past everything, because I'm really not interested in dealing with any of this crap. And we're just going to get it done. So we're going to try to get both adventures done in this episode. You guys can just stop. Um, and I just try to blitz through it as quickly as possible. Because I really don't want to deal with it. Hi guys. Get out of here. So what we need to do is we need to go this away. Oh, looks like I got to find myself a daemon here. Alright. where? Oh, there we go. We got a couple. Alright, cool. There's one. Hopefully that actually gets that. I got one. Oh, come on, get the other one. There we go, that's two. Hold on. Three! Alright, we're good. Forest pathway cleared. Excuse me, guys, I need to float past all of you, and since I'm a warlock, I should recover really quickly. Thank you. Let's run a little circle just to make sure they can't chase me. Okay, they're leaving. Good. Alright, and onward we go. Just like that. So there's something else I wanted to talk about in this episode that I haven't really addressed, and this is a this is actually an overall Destiny complaint. Um, this is not a Destiny 2 specific complaint, because, well, it was a problem in Destiny 1, and it's something I still have a problem with. So I want to confess to you guys the reason why I am a Hunter main. Now, I'm not a Warlock main, I know. You For those who have watched this playthrough and don't know, I am not a... I don't play Warlock all that often. I did a lot when Destiny uh, 1 first came out, but there's a reason I stopped playing, and that was because a certain jump ability that has been in every destiny since but is severely worse than it used to be is blink now i used to use blink a lot because blink was a lot of fun to use it basically was a teleport jump that was a lot more effective or that used to be a lot more effective before it got um heavily nerfed because while well, it was overused it was so fun to use and that pretty much killed warlock for me unfortunately it, in, in a way it kind of killed um blade dancer as well which was the hunter ability that had the same exact jump um wasn't too much of a fan of that so, uh, I basically dropped those, started working on Gunslinger for Hunter, and that's pretty much all I played throughout the remainder of Destiny 1. Um, in Destiny 2, all I play is Arc Strider for the most part, and a little tiny, tiny bit of Gunslinger in PvP, but that's about it. So, there's a reason I don't really play a lot of Warlock and Titan, and it is because of their jumps. I have a severe gripe with both of their jumps, and I'm going to talk about why. It is because, while yes, the jumps are effective for getting to places you need to go, there is absolutely no, positively no recovery option for the Warlocks. There kind of is for Titans, but only if you select one of the Titan jumps, and only sometimes does it work. Um, only sometimes does it work. It's Even then, there's still a very, very slim margin for error. And what I mean by there's no recovery option is, and you know what, I'm actually going to clear this area so I can kind of demonstrate it to you guys really quick, so pardon me while I kill everything. Alright, there's one. There's another. There we go. Hold on. 
Get out of here, sir. Hold on. There we go. Okay, we're good, we're good. So I want to kind of uh, demonstrate to you why I freaking hate the Warlock Jump and the Titan Jump. Um, and we're going to use the Warlock Jump as an example. Now, all you need to do, all you need to do to notice the difference between um, the Warlock Jump and the Titan Jump, the only difference between them is that upon your second jump with the Titan, it does change your moment. I mean, uh, sorry, it does not change your momentum going downwards a war the warlock jump if you press it again stops your momentum altogether now this obviously can be changed a little bit but not enough so like for instance if i'm a warlock and i jump and i'm like stuck if i'm stuck like right here i'm screwed i can't get back up like if i get bumped off at all unless i am absolutely hugging the edge i'm dead as a hunter i can i can jump my way back up to safety no problem because every single time you jump as a hunter you are able to change your trajectory from the moment the point at which you pressed x or a or whatever it is on whatever system you're playing on warlocks have no such recourse the only thing that a that the warlock jump does is increase your momentum that you're already moving in which is fine it's good for getting to places you need to go but in a game like destiny 2 where this is especially prevalent because there are so many knockback backs and boops in this game it becomes a massive problem the reason i have a problem with the titan jump and i actually have a little less of a problem with the titan jump but i still hate it for the same reasons is if you have uh i believe not catapult but higher jump equipped you can as long as you don't have too much momentum going downward, lift yourself back up. But again, you can't have too much momentum going downward. The problem is, is that the second jump on the Titan doesn't counteract um, any momentum you have, or it tries to fight against it rather than stopping the momentum altogether. The Warlock simply delays it. The Titan has to fight against it, and if you're falling too fast, you won't be able to save yourself and you'll fall to your death anyway. Which... The reason I hit the Titan jump for that reason is because, well, even when you have to just jump off of high ledges, that jump can kill you sometimes if you don't time it properly. So that's why that one bugs me. But like I said, there's no recovery option for those two jumps. And that's one of my biggest issues, especially in Destiny 2, where recovery is a much bigger issue. The only things that really knocked you back, um, case in point, <laughs> case in point right there. Um, the only things that knocked you back in Destiny 1 really were the fa were the phalanxes both uh, cabal and taken however the cabal phalanxes knocked you back so far you were pretty much dead no matter what um and that was more of a meme and a joke than anything it was kind of just an oh haha -ha, their physics are funny and then the taken ones but they barely knocked you back in destiny 2 boops and knockbacks are so much more severe that it makes these jumps a bigger problem now that's again i don't want to say that's an issue inherently with destiny 2 but the fact that the jumps never changed to um work with the constant boops and the constant um uh, to work with the constant boops and the constant knockbacks that are present in this game is an issue but it's i really think they didn't like look into that too much because warlock and titan jumps didn't really receive that many complaints in destiny one but now i think it's a real problem and i know a lot of people probably disagree with me a lot of people like their warlocks and titan jumps if they use them a lot I can't stand them. I have not been able to play Warlock or Titan all that effectively or all that enjoyably because of them. Like, Warlock to an extent, I can, sure. I still wish they would fix Blink. I'd probably enjoy it more again. But, I just, I can't even do Titan. I, I It's the whole reason I can't do Titan. It's just because of the freaking knockback. Or the, the knockback, the, the jump. It's the whole reason I will never play Titan or main it. And I know I'm missing out because Titans are practically broken in PvP, but still. So what we need to do is we need to do, put the Arc Charge in the simulation. And we need to stop the Hive from getting to it. We need to fight off two waves. Two very, very big waves of Hive. And the way you're going to want to do this is to stay very close to this Conflux. You can't let the Hive get anywhere near it, but they aren't going to come in here. Um, they usually aren't going to come in here without, unless they really want to cause trouble. So I would stay as close to this as possible. The thing is, is that the hive do get near it though. They can shut it down really quickly and you have to start over. So just make sure that you're in the area at least. Just keep those bombs from hitting me. There we go. Let's blow everything up because cosmology is amazing. I majored in cosmology. That's why I have the Graviton Lance. You can shoot the guns on the Hive Tomb ships, by the way, but it's usually not worth it because they typically leave a lot faster. The only guns that are ever worth shooting are on the Cabal and Fallen ships, but mostly because they like to hang around and continue to fire at you, even after you're, even while you're dealing with all of the things that they drop down. So, not the biggest fan 
of those, that's for sure. Excuse me, sir. Get out of here. So they're going to try to move around and go and try to dodge me a little bit. So I can see them on my radar right here. So let's go this way. Sir, no. You don't you dare. Get away. And just continue to fight off the waves. Hey! Get away! Uh-uh! Uh-uh! Shoot, 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 shoot. Working on it. Working on it. Okay, now I got to stand on the plate to make sure that I, re I fix it back up again. Uh, that's the only problem is you do kind of have to stay a little bit outside just to make sure that they don't you know, sneak around without you noticing them. Pardon me. There we go. This doesn't take too long. What the heck is here? How did you even get here? Wait, hold on. Where are you? Get out! Jeez. Freaking running in circles, you piece of crap. Jeez. I hate you. Okay, one more wave. Getting there. I'm ready. Where are they at? Oh, it's such a pretty area. All right, so they're coming from all directions. This will be fun. Oh, hi there. Hold on. Pardon me and goodbye. Wait, excuse me. You can't just teleport like that. I do not appreciate that in the slightest. There we go. Have one of those. Beautiful. I think one of them might be going around. Hold on. Are you coming close? Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, they backed off. Or I killed them. One or the other. Beautiful. Just like that. I mean, it is beautiful. It's a very cool effect. I love it. I love Graviton Lance so much, and I will swear by this gun until the day I die, or until they nerf it, which I really hope they don't. Don't, don't ever nerf this gun, Bungie. Guns don't need nerfs, they need buffs. Especially exotics, they just need to be more fun. There we go. Too good. Although, actually, if to, to kind of take back what I said, this gun maybe could use a little bit of a tweak in PvP. It is kind of... Uh, okay, it doesn't need a tweak. Everything around it needs a tweak because it is by far the most dominant gun in the game. And while I think it's time to kill as optimal, it uh, there definitely needs to have more, be more competition to it besides the vigilant swing. If I'm being honest, and nobody will understand what I'm talking about because probably nobody watching this video understands the PvP meta. Oh yeah, I'm sure that didn't go well for anybody involved because the Hive homeworld sucks, even for the Hive. No, not even the Hive like it. Oh, it's the worst. Also, I don't know how I got launched up like that. Oh, I think the hitbox for this uh, tomb ship spawned and it sent me flying. Okay. Oh, hi there, dude. Right, well, I'm gonna just take a couple pot shot. Hold on, hold on. Did that reach him? Got him. Sweet, we're good. Keep coming. That's right, I think I think they're just gonna take a second to despawn, but I think we got it. Hello? Are you guys gonna keep coming? You know you could just, you know, screw off or whatever. No? You gonna keep coming? Okay. Oh! Oh jeez! That was like life flashing before my eyes right there. Don't do that. Okay, now they finally despawned. Oh yeah, yay. We good? I think we're good. Oh, that's right. Now I gotta retrieve the chest. Good. Vex misfortune is one of my favorite things. Of course, with all the bad data you're feeding them, there could be side effects in other simulations, like the one you're in. Time to go. Okay. Well, we're out of here. So that is it for bug in the system. Just kind of wait for the adventure to actually complete. Thank you. And now we got one more to do, which is called the runner. And actually, you know what? I might as well just go back this way. I really hope this just takes me directly back, because. Uh, I don't want to have to run through the infinite forest again. Oh my gosh, I don't. Please don't make me do that, or I will just fast travel back because I don't want to waste my time. Especially because the runner is going to make me run through it again. And also, I do have to do the up and up again, but for a completely different reason. But we'll save that for the next episode. Um, they really are going to make me do that again, aren't they? Wait, does this teleport me back? Am I out? Am I out? See, okay, um, why does it have to... Okay, I should have just fast-traveled back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, this is an ordeal. 
I didn't think this was going to take so long. hi yi yi Is that 12 minutes or something like that just to do that adventure? Jeez. Okay, next time I am just, just fast traveling back. F that. Alright, so we're done with the one. And now the other one is right... Um, not that one. Nope, that's the up and up heroic. You know what? I'm actually going to talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about the up and up heroic. Um, and by that, let's by that I mean let's talk about modifiers for a second. Let's have that conversation because that's another complaint I have about Destiny too. Yeah, yeah, we'll go after it. So, Destiny two. Uh, okay, well, Destiny 1, for that matter, we talked about this in Destiny 1, with heroic variants, such as heroic daily missions and heroic strikes, as well as nightfalls, there was a thing that was known as modifiers that were implemented, that were supposed to... It was supposed to kind of... There were there were some that were hindrances, there were some that were positives, and there were some that made double-edged swords. For instance, for uh, hindrances, something like grounded, where if you were in the air, you would take a lot more damage. However, um, so, you, so basically you couldn't jump around, which is a little bit counterintuitive to the style of the game uh, the way the game is played because um jumping around kind of is the way that you for the most part avoid enemy fire in destiny so a little bit counterintuitive but you had to use it to as your advantage and de um and then you also had other modifiers um that just made up thing made things just straight up better like small arms which made all pri primary weapons do more damage and didn't affect the enemies in any way and then, of course, there were the double-edged sword ones like Arc Burn, where, um, uh, you know, arc damage that you sent out was doubled in power, but also damage, arc damage you took in was doubled in power. So that was, so that was an interesting way to play around as well and definitely made for more fun activities. Now let's talk about the way that these things were uh, um, implemented in Destiny 2 and why they were poorly handled in every single freaking way, because I liked modifiers in Destiny 1. I really liked modifiers in Destiny 1. I thought they were fun. They made heroic strikes super replayable. They gave you... They made it so that you could play with all sorts of different loadouts because you'd have things like Void Burn and Small Arms one week. So that meant I had to use Word of Crota, which was a Void Primary hand cannon. But then another week, there would be, you know, Arc Burn and Airborne or something like that. So I'd run my Blade Dancer class and just jump around using Fatebringer the whole time. You know, things like that. Things that actually made the experience more fun and enjoyable. In Destiny 2, the implementation of this was completely terrible. And the reason why is because... They made all of the good. They made took all of the good modifiers away. They made all of the bad f modifiers infinitely worse, and they made all of the double-edged sword modifiers negligible. Basically nothing. Instead of burns, you have singes, which almost might as well have no freaking effect. Then there are things like um, modifiers in heroic strike or in heroic adventures that just get even worse. Let's talk about the Prism modifier for a second. So this was introduced in Destiny 2 is and is only present, as far as I know, it might be in Nightfalls actually, but I know it is present in Heroic Adventures. This is the worst ad uh, modifier of all freaking time. What Prism does is it rotates a burn that is going to show up kind of where Devour is on the left right now. Um, it's going to show a little icon that rotates the burn that is currently active. Now that's going to give you an actual burn effect that increases your damage but weakens others this is the problem with that it weakens others it doesn't just give you an advantage it makes every other weapon you're using useless problem is with this game is it doesn't let you switch loadouts on the fly and um that burn rotates like every every freaking 30 seconds on top of that Destiny 2 especially, I mean, Destiny 1 kind of had a problem with this, where if you were above the enemies in light level, you wouldn't really notice a big difference in your power chain, uh, power differences, unless you were pretty high above the enemies you were against. In Destiny, there's no difference. You could be 200 power above the enemy you're facing, and they're just as strong as one that's 20, 20 power below you, like they're in, in terms of relativity. It's really bad. It's like you do not feel more powerful than your enemies. You just feel less weak, if that makes sense. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so to capitalize on that, um, the fact that if you don't have the burns active, you might as well not be doing an, um, damage to that enemy whatsoever when you're shooting at it, oh, which is incredibly freaking annoying and draws out the fight, especially if you have a, the burn comes up that you aren't able to use because, well, you can kind of only use two burns at once in this game because you don't always have your abilities active and you only get one power weapon and one energy weapon to choose from. So, like, let's see right now, if I were to ever have the solar uh, burn come up while I'm in this while I'm in this uh, heroic adventure, let's say hypothetically, I would literally have to just stand around for 30 seconds and do nothing because I, I can't do anything. I can't do anything while that solar burn is active because everything I throw at anybody is useless and if I try to attack them, I will just die. 
Bad modifiers. Not a good idea, Bungie. They are so poorly implemented in this game, it isn't even funny. It's absolutely infuriating, in fact. It makes Heroic Strikes a chore. It makes a Heroic Adventures absolutely n not worth doing in the slightest, because all they do is give you a single Legendary Engram, which are already worthless in Destiny 2. At least they will be until random rolls come back. So, with all of that said... I think it, I think uh, that they need to be re-implemented the way the way the way they were in Destiny One. Bring back the really fun ones like small arms. Airborne should be a lot more effective than it was in, um, as effective as it was in Destiny One because it's not that effective. Grounded is overpowering in this game. A lot of the bad modifiers are overpowering. They need to be toned down. I get that it's for difficulty's sake, but the problem is is. It's not really good a good excuse or for difficulty's sake, quote unquote, when all it does is completely hinder your ability to play the game and restrict your um, play style and just makes the player uncomfortable. It's not even like it's not even like it's a good method or a good tool of learning. It's just uncomfortable. That's all that the modifiers are. They're just uncomfortable. Alright, so are you gonna seriously keep following me? Get out of here, you guys. Alright, I need to follow this guy and kill him as quickly as possible. They're just, it was just really poorly handled on Bundy's part, and I really think that they need to do a better job with those in the future. Am I still being followed? Oh my gosh. Apparently, I don't know, I actually can't tell if I am. Okay, come here, you. We've almost got him. One more crit shot should do it. Oh, the wall spawned. Gosh dang it. Oh, pfft. and then that dropped right in front of my shot. Oh my gosh, that was just a cock block if I've ever seen one. Technology, part biology, just like the Vex. All right, we're going after it. So we got to retrieve another chest, and then we're done with this adventure. Hold on, gotta go the long way around. But that's enough complaining, hopefully, about that. Although my next video that I'm going to make is going to be, well, it's a video I've never wanted to make throughout this playthrough, but I think it's incredibly important. So we're going to be going into that in the next episode. So in the next episode, I'm going to see you guys in the Up and Up adventure. We are technically done with Mercury, but there's one thing I need to show you guys that I neglected to show you when we initially did the adventure in the last episode that I plan to show you guys in the next one, and we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. So with all of that said, um, and then after that, we'll actually be done with Curse of Osiris, which will be great. But uh, thank you all so very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Destiny 2. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.